So can you describe what actually happens in the body when you consume gluten? You bet. Um, what happens is that anyone who eats gluten, they develop something called intestinal permeability. And uh, the slang term for that is leaky gut. So some people have heard about leaky gut. But everyone and anyone that eats gluten will get intestinal permeability. For some people, it's transient, and it lasts about five hours, and then the gut heals itself. You know, the fastest-growing cells in your body are the inside lining of your gut, and you have a whole new lining to your gut every couple, three days. And it's like a snake shedding its skin. You, you keep building new cells on the lining of your gut. So you get this intestinal permeability. Uh, for some people, it only lasts five hours, and then your body heals. But when you keep having the exposure again and again and again, Eventually, and one study said within 36 hours, you've got long-term intestinal permeability, the leaky gut. When you have long-term intestinal permeability, you get these larger molecules going from, see, the inside of your gut, your gut's a big, long tube. It's about 25 feet long. And if you think of it, it's like a donut. And if you could take a donut and just stretch the donut 20 feet long, there's still a tube in the center, a hole in the center of that one big, long, stretch donut. That's our intestines. So when you eat food and you swallow food, the food is really still outside your body. It's in the tube, and it hasn't gotten inside the donut into the bloodstream yet. Uh, it's kind of an unusual concept, but it's still outside the body. Hmm. Digestion is breaking down the food into all these tiny little parts, you know, the one brick at a time, that gets absorbed, and so then the body can take all these little parts and put them back together and make liver cells or make um, uh, corticosteroids, hormones, it could make thyroid hormone, can make um, the, the uh, flushing fluid in your eyes, that um, our bodies make all uh, everything we use out of the food that we eat. And in order to make the different components that it makes, the food that we eat has to be in the form that the body can use. The raw material has to be in that form. If you're building a house and the big truck comes up with a big load of lumber that's all wrapped up tight, you know, in these binds that hold it all together, and they just put that big binded bunch of lumber, two by fours or two by eights on the ground, they're all tied up really tight uh, and bound together, you can't use that to build a house. You have to get the binds off of it so you can take one at a time and use it. That's what digestion is is breaking down your foods into one two-by-four at a time, if I can use that visual. Um, but what happens when you have intestinal permeability from gluten or there are other things that can cause it, uh, gluten's not the only one, but when you have the leaky gut, bigger molecules, bigger clumps of brick get through the lining of the intestines than should be allowed to get through. It's kind of like your intestines are lined with cheesecloth. And intestinal permeability is a tear in the cheesecloth. So these bigger molecules get in, and the result of that is they're called macromolecules. And your body makes, uh, your immune system says, whoa, what's this? This is not good for me. And you make antibodies to the tomatoes or antibodies to beef or antibodies to strawberries or antibodies to any of these larger molecules that get in. And these are the patients who have 15 or 20 different allergies on an allergy test, and they really don't have 15. Well, they do, I guess, because their immune system's reacting, but when you heal the intestines, then they have two allergies, maybe three, you know, and the other 15 just calm down. So that's what happens when you eat gluten, is that you develop this intestinal permeability. Now, what we know about intestinal permeability is that it is a precursor in the development of autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases means thyroid disease, liver disease, brain diseases uh, like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, uh, lupus, multiple sclerosis, that intestinal permeability has been identified as a precursor in the development of those things. So you pull it a chain, it breaks the weak link. If your weak link is your reproductive system and you get intestinal permeability, and then these macromolecules are coming in, they're pulling at the chain, your body may, can, may make antibodies to your reproductive system, and you may suffer from recurrent miscarriages, unexplained recurrent miscarriages, and that may be the mechanism that's causing it. 